Conjugated dienes are characterized by alternating double and single bonds. And the single bonds in conjugated dienes have some interesting conformational aspects, which we're going to explore in this video. In particular, if we look at 1,3-butadiene, which is kind of our prototypical conjugated diene here, it's got two conformations that we call S-cis and S-trans that differ in rotation about the central single bond, the C2-C3 bond. They're called S-cis and S-trans, and we'll see why here shortly. So first, let's look at the S-cis conformation. So in the S-cis conformation, the two double bonds are on the same side as the single bond. And so notice if we highlight the single bond here in red, both CH2 groups on the ends of these double bonds are on the same side of that single bond. So they're sort of cisoid to each other, we might say. They're on the same side of that single bond. If I rotate around the central CC single bond so that one of the double bonds sort of flips to the other side, well, that gives the S trans conformer. And in the S trans conformer, now if I again highlight the central CC single bond in blue, the two CH2 groups are on opposite sides of that single bond. So this is known as, as S trans. And these two conformers differ in energy and there's an activation barrier to their interconversion. And we're going to see why here shortly. So first, let's look at the energy difference between the conformers in a, in a ground state sense, the thermodynamic say, free energy difference between the S, S, and S trans conformers. If we measure that, it comes out to 2.9 kilocalories per mole. And if we do the math on free energy and equilibrium constants, that's a ratio of about 98 to 2 at equilibrium. That's 98% S trans conformer and 2% S cis. And the reasons why are pretty straightforward to understand. In the S cis conformer, the two CH2 groups on the ends of the alkenes here are relatively close to each other. So there are hydrogens, for example, here and here that are bumping into each other. We alleviate that steric interaction, or essentially eliminate that steric interaction in the S trans conformer, where one of the CH2 groups has swung around to the other side. So the S trans conformer is, is more stable for steric reasons than the S cis conformer, to the tune of about 98 to 2 at equilibrium. That energy difference on this sort of conformational potential energy di diagram is right here, 2.9 kilocalories per mole, right there. And I'll preface this by saying that this graph is unfortunately not to scale. This activation barrier is actually larger than 3 kilocalories per mole, just an unfortunate accident of, of making the figure, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And let's cross that bridge now. So the activation barrier for the interconversion between the S cis and S trans conformers is 3.7 kilocalories per mole. And this is actually a little bit curious if we think about it. Why is there an activation barrier to rotation about a single bond? We know from introductory chemistry and basic ideas about valence bond theory and sigma bonds that they're generally free to rotate because rotation doesn't mess with the orbital overlap between the, say, the sp2 hybrids at all involved in making that, that sigma bond. But conjugated dienes are unique because the pi electrons in a conjugated diene are actually delocalized over all four atoms. And we touched on this earlier. There's double bond character in that C2C3 bond. It's not a plain vanilla carbon-carbon single bond. There's some double bond character there. And just like double bond, just like standard pi bonds that we've seen in a valence bond theory context before, there is a barrier to rotation because of the pi-type overlap between p orbitals at C2 and C3. And this is the origin of this activation barrier. So that CC double bond character there actually inhibits or provides an activation energy or activation barrier for rotation. And that comes out to, if we measure it, about 3.7 kilocalories per mole. And that's this activation barrier here on the diagram. And again, unfortunately, this is not to scale. This should be a uh, larger gap than the 2.9 between the ground states, but you get the idea. All right, the thing to notice now is that the 3.7 kilocalories per mole is actually a familiar value. This is equal to the energy of stabilization associated with conjugation that we got from the heats of hydrogenation experiment that we've seen previously. And that's not a coincidence. Rotation about that carbon-carbon single bond destroys conjugation, destroys electron delocalization. What it does is it brings the p orbitals associated with one of the double bonds out of sign-on overlap with the p orbitals of the other double bonds. 
These are now at right angles to each other in the transition state, we would say, for this rotation, right? So there's now no overlap between these p orbitals and these p orbitals, and we've turned this conjugated diene, at least transiently in the transition state, into essentially an isolated diene with the two pi bonds at right angles to each other. So we've destroyed conjugation, and we've, as a consequence, lost that stabilization energy of conjugation, that 3.7 kilocalories per mole is lost in the transition state. And of course, as the rotation continues, we get that stabilization energy back, which is why the molecule falls back down and eventually gets down to the energy of the S-trans conformer. But it's key here to notice that because we've destroyed conjugation in the transition state, there is an activation barrier here, and that barrier is the energy associated with stabilization due to conjugation. So we'll see these conformers again, is the last thing I'll say. Dienes react in several important reactions, one of which will, will f uh, feature in an upcoming lesson. And in those reactions, the S cis conformer is actually the reactive conformer, even though it's only present to the tune of 2% at equilibrium. This has important consequences on what we need to do to get that reaction to go. And I don't want to say too much at this point. I'll just mention that uh, we will see S cis and S trans conformers of conjugated dienes again, so you'll want to keep this concept in mind.